Hello everyone, my name is Alison Fernandez. I am from the Universidad Mayor of San Simón and my talk is about analyzing software evolution through multiple matrix. I did this project with Alexandre Vergel of the University of the talk, the talk is about software evolution and what we can think about software evolution, we think in change. Something is changing. So for this presentation, I have this example, only for this presentation, okay? Uh, now, we have a developer, it calls Laura, and she modify, she create some classes A and B, and she do a commit over a project, so this is the version one of this project. It passed the time and Marcelo joined to Laura and create his classes while Laura is still working on, his, on their classes and do a commit, and this is the version two, and so on. It is joined and well, it's the same. What I want to show here is that past the time and the people are joining together to improve software, uh, the classes are modified and there exist versions of many projects and so on. So, uh, some developers, some product manager ask I want to know this. What are the changes of the classes at the range of time? When a contributor made changes and when a class was changed, okay? So I will explain. <laughs> I will explain how to do this. I did that yesterday. <laughs> Our approach, yes, I know there are so many alternatives, but our approach is to combine a domain specific language to produce visualization based on stacking matrices. Okay, so I will explain the visualization. Let's go back to the previous slide. We have practically a group of developers changing a group of classes at a specific time. So, one way to see this is at a specific time, in this case the version 3, this group of developers modify this group of classes, but to this graphic it means something. We don't know the force of the contribution of the authors to the classes. Okay? <laughs> now, to give more information about these relationships, we add weight. This is a graph, practically. Okay? But I don't want to speak about graph because maybe not everybody knows. Okay, so this is a graphic, a group of developers and a group of class, and we can say it is modify 11 lines of code or can be number of methods at the class E. So, another way to see this is with a matrix. A matrix that represents the relationship between two groups of elements at a specific time. For the previous slide, we have uh, at the rows, the developers, at the columns, the classes, and at the bottom of the matrix, the time. So each cell of the matrix represents a relationship between a developer and a class, and the color of these cells has a meaning. The color represents the weight, so if the color of the cell is gray, it means that there is no relationship. And if the color of the cell goes to pink or higher, it means that the contribution is more strongest, okay? So, if a matrix represents a specific time, the evolution, the change, could be shown as a sequence of matrix, right? But, other way to see this is stacking matrices. This idea was presented by Batch at his paper, a Small Multipiles, at a computer graphics at 2015, I think. So, I will explain the parts of the pile matrix. The first part are the horizontal bars. We have each horizontal bar uh, represents a matrix stuck at the pile, okay? And each bar has n cells, where n is the number of 
columns that has a matrix. So in this case, we say the columns are the classes. So that horizontal bar represents a summarize of the, co of the columns of the classes. The color, it means the number of relationships that has involved this class. I will show you how. For the first cell, we got a pink. So there is a relationship. If we go to the first matrix, to the first column, we can see that the first class was modified by only one contributor. But there is one class. So this summarize, these horizontal bars can answer the question, how many contributors modify this class at this time? And so, modify but one contributor and the next cells are gray because no one touched. We have a second element that are vertical bars and are the same as the horizontal bars, only that this summarize the rows. It means the contributors. So we can see that the first cell is gray because, because this contributor at this time doesn't modify nothing. And the second cell is going to be pink, uh, intense pink, because this contributor modified two classes. So the summarize of the vertical bars answer how many classes a contributor modify at this time. Mm, well, we have a third element, C. This matrix is called cover matrix. It's practically the coverage, well, well, the average of all stacked matrix. So, what we can see with this? We can see that in the period of from, one, from time one to time three, the first contributor only modified one class. And in the same period of time, this class, the last class, only was modified by this contributor. So, uh, it's average, like I said. And the last element is like a little description from the start time to the end of time. So, also we have a timeline that practically is the horizontal bars, but in other position. They are like a stand up. And these horizontal bars and these vertical bars represent uh, a second matri matrix, I'd say. And that's why they provide us interaction so we can navigate through the time with this visualization. Also, the timeline provides us interaction, okay? Now, okay, the visualization is good, we have matrices, excellent, but how, how can we analyze software evolution? We have a domain-specific language that, that allows to do two operations, the principal operations, that are stacking matrices. How can I stack a matrix? We can stack matrices with a range of time. We say from one to three, these matrices stack. Okay, perfect. Or we can stack matrices with a condition. What that means? That each matrix must satisfy this condition to be stacked. The other thing that we can do is highlighting data. How? with a condition. Every relationship that satisfies some condition, it will be highlighted with a color. So we have here a little uh, example. This data uh, Alexandre gave to me is about Jet Inspector, the first versions, I think. And we will see if you give to multiple matrix the data, only the data, the default view is this. 
a sequence of matrix representing each version at the rows, the contributors, at the columns, the classes. So, what we can do? The change of the classes at the range of time. So, I will apply from time 0 to time 51 and we focus on the timeline. What can I say with the timeline? I can say that from, range, from time 0 to time 38, the only class that was modified is Jet Inspector. The only class. And I can say that in the time 40, only the last three classes were modified. And Jet Inspector wasn't touched anymore from the time 46 to the time 51. Also, if we, uh, we see the intensity of color, I can say that more than a contributor modified the class jet example at the time 51 because, because in that cell the color is more intense. The same uh, with the class jet example result at the time 40 and the time 38, I think. Okay? So, this kind of things we can observe with this visualization. When an author makes changes, well, we focus on Stefan Reichardt and we say every relationship that involves Stefan Reichardt will be highlighted with blue. And if in a time Stefan Reichardt has made a commit or a modification over a class, this time will stack. And the result is this. We have a pi matrix at the range of 46 to 51. The blue, the source blue, represents Stefan Reichardt. So we can say that Stefan Reichardt in this period of time modified seven classes, but never touched the last three classes. Never. Okay? And at this range of time, while Stefan Reicher was working, anybody touched the last three classes. Nobody. Why? Because of the color matrix is all gray and because of the horizontal bars are all gray. So nobody touched these classes. If we can assure of this, we can see the timeline and, well, we can see everything is empty for this. And ah, so, what was the other question? When a class was changed? So, we focus on the last three classes, one of the last. Jet Inspector Tag Filter, we will highlight with green and we will apply the times when Jet Inspector Tag Filter was modified. So, only at the range 40 to 41 was modified. And we will highlight with green, I say. So, we only see a cell. Only a cell with green. This means that only a contributor at all this time modified Jet Inspector Tag Filter. And this contributor is Andre Cheese. So, if Andre Cheese never joined to the project, maybe, or if Andre Cheese go out from the project, this class doesn't have someone to support it. No? And we can see this, this kind of things with the visualization. Now, we did an evaluation of the visualization that was a controlled experiment. I will explain about it. We compare us with Excel, okay? <laughs> and we have two tasks. One of the tasks have data of contribution, developers modifying classes, and the other tasks have data of interaction of objects during execution of the program. Mm -hmm. uh, we write learning material for Excel and for multiple matrix, and we uh, adopt a strategy that we look at the table. We have eight participants. The half of the participants must do the task one with Excel and the task two with multiple matrix. And the other half must change the tools. Task one with multiple matrix and task two with Excel. So, what we want to know? 
We want to know if these participants using multiplier matrix will resolve the questions more faster than using Excel. And we want to know if these participants using multiplier matrix got a better score than using Excel. So for this, what we do? We measure the time and the precision and the recall for the better score. And also, at the end of the experiment, we talk with them and say, what do you think about multiplier matrix? What can be improved? Or do you think it's useful? So these are the results. We have eight participants. The time of Excel is with green and the time of multiplier matrix is with white. So we do uh, a statistic and that, that kind of things and we conclude that multiplier matrix, the participants using multiplier matrix were more faster to answer these questions than using Excel. And there are the results of the score. F measure is a metric that takes the precision and the recall practically with a formula and uh, they add the precision to the recall and they divide in two. Okay? So this is the graphic and we can say that multiplier matrix the participants using multiplier matrix got better score than using Excel. Uh, the retrospective. Okay. I must say that I did this experiment at my country. And my country is Bolivia. And no one knows a small talk. And this work was in small talk. So the DSL was in a small talk and they have to learn the syntax. So the people say to me, oh, I like the tool, I like to write in a small talk. I don't know that was a small talk. But not everybody maybe could learn or understand the syntax. So maybe to be more useful you can I don't know, do something with the DSL because maybe the people have problems because they don't know. So I developed a user interface. And for what was my decision, these are displayable menus and at this part we have uh, a text area and at that text area it, the ball, the, it will be show the equivalent writing the DSL. So the people can select their options and see how to write with the DSL. Okay? Well, summary. Multiply matrix is a DSL to produce visualizations, interactive visualizations, based on a pile of matrices, okay? And the future work that we got for the retrospective for I tell Alexander that we, we should do this and he say me, well, okay, but be calm, we will get to this and I was like, okay, okay, we will do this, but well, the software, but, uh, the software evolution and all I show you, it was very simple. At the real life, it's not that simple. It's not, okay, five. I modified five lines of code. Great. Now we can see change of the code. We can see the commits, the day, the hour, and that kind of things. So it's more complex than it seems and maybe we want to uh, work not only with classes because the data was uh, with the repositories of uh, Smalltalk Hub, I think. So maybe we can work with GitHub and something like that. So I work it, but I'm not going to show you at this presentation for the time, okay?
and everything is okay. But we do a retrospective and there are so many things to improve. <laughs> okay, thank you everyone. I have to show you, uh, I have to say to you that this project, uh, it, it generates a paper that we send to the informa information and software technology, I think, and we, we're doing okay. Thank you. <laughs> Do you have some questions? Maybe? What size are the last that you are last? I think that the complex system, when you have thousand classes, yes. some kind of summary for this and then maybe. Yes, maybe. yes, I do that. And also, uh, well, we can visualize everything, maybe it's not necessary, maybe, so I add filters, I have filter, filters for this. So, is your clear to me the core of the study? So, if I study today, uh, is there a way I can fit the tool with some magic code that will get me the data from a history of our repository? Yes. I get the question. Yes, don't worry. Uh, Alexandra developed a tool that is called Evo, I think. And uh, you can give Evo a repository of a small talk hub and you can set the parameters that you want to be and it converts to a uh, file .csv Okay, okay, thank you Anyone? Nobody? Okay, thank you